we got to have a little fun once in a while. Okay, so what's the deal with the broom? So as you guys know, uh, one of the one of the uh, our sponsors for the channel is, is of course Yanmar. Um, and what what our agreement with what what our agreement is with Yanmar, as I've spoke to this in the past, is a tester of of a lot of their new equipment, their new tractors, different implements and things. And then you know we get do feedback, and so it's a win win situation. We get a tractor and we get to use all this fun stuff and try it out. Uh, we get to, it helps with our content. It helps Yanmar putting their products in the hands of real people and getting real feedback. So it's, it's really a positive thing. Um, so what I want to talk about today is the snowblower. So as you know, what was it? Two or three weeks ago, uh, we had a pretty good snowstorm and hundreds of people are asking, how come you didn't show the snowblower? We've been waiting all winter for that. Well, there's a couple reasons for that, or there's one main reason is it didn't work very well. Um, now I'm trying to get down to the bottom of it and, and that's the reason why I put the broom on. Now Yanmar sent the broom out uh, because a lot of folks have been using rotary brooms like that um, uh, to clear snow. And so I said, oh, I don't really know if that's going to work uh, for us. They said, well, we'll send it out and you can try it and see. So I haven't had the opportunity to use it. But the reason why I put it on is because we're trying to diagnose what's going on with the snowblower. Now there's two major components to it apart from the tractor, there's the hydraulic power unit on the back, which is producing the hydraulic fluid and the pressure to run the snowblower. And we're trying to figure out what the settings are. So this is not a big deal. And this is kind of a, this is not something that is really, that I know of has been done a lot, especially on this tractor. And so that's, this is kind of the perfect opportunity for us to try things out and see what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. That way I have a direct line of communication with the Anmar and we can iron these situations out. But what I'm, what I'm pretty sure of, what I'm thinking of it, there's, it's got nothing to do with the Yanmar side of it. And I think the problem may be up in the front snowblower. So here's what's going on. So the snowblower, I hooked it up and I had all the cameras out and I was ready to do the video. Uh, of, I was gonna blow the neighbors and, and Jeff's place and all of that. Um, and it just wasn't working very good. And I, I struggled with it for about four hours. It was uh, not blowing snow very far, you know, maybe seven, eight, 10 feet at, at the most. It was clogging up a lot. Uh, whenever I shut the PTO off to turn around and go a different direction, um, the, the, the ice had melted and it would freeze and then it wouldn't start going again. I'd have to bring it in here and, and get a torch and melt all the ice out of it. It was just a nightmare. So I, I contacted um, the manufacturer who, who builds this and, and we pretty much agree, uh, have figured out that the fan's not spinning fast enough. And if a span's, fan's not spinning fast enough, then it's not going to clean itself and eject the snow. Because this power pack unit here should be putting, it's putting out a lot of pressure. So it's putting out 3000 PSI, I believe at over 20 gallons a minute, which is way, way, uh, plenty, plenty of pressure and, and volume fluid uh, to have that, that snowblower just humming. And I did notice when I hooked it up, I've heard snowblowers in the past, when they're running properly and that, and that fan that blows the snow out it is getting up to speed, I mean, it sounds like an airplane prop. It's just, it howls. And this was never doing that. So what I think is going on is I think that something, uh, there's a bypass valve that is opening, that is redirecting fluid, not allowing it to get full pressure to the, to the fan. Uh, is what I'm thinking because that's and that's why I put the broom on the broom on the broom was a high volume uh, uh, implement and I put it on here and as you saw it seemed to work perfectly I even put quite a bit of weight on it and put some pressure on it and it just spun like crazy so I don't think that there's anything wrong with the Yanmar side I think that we have a problem up front so let me hook it up bring it around and I'll kind of explain to you what's going on maybe you guys know uh, but I think we'll get it ironed out here soon enough we got we got the the greatest hydraulic mines and the, the two companies working on it so let's hook this up real quick and then we'll I'll kind of show you We'll take a look at it together and see what's going on. I'm, I'm kind of anxious to get all this uh, sorted out because um, we have, it, we might be getting some snow in a week or so, and it'd be nice to, and nice to use the blower uh, and see what is, what is happening here. All right, let's, let's fire it up, see what's going on. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to go in and I'm going to run the, the PTO 
the drive up to 540 RPMs. That's the operating speed for the power pack as well as the, the front blower. And then we'll take a look at it, see what's going on. Now, the ones I've seen in the past, that, that blower, the portion in the center, that thing should just be howling at that speed. And I never have seen that. So something is not, there's not, it, it, the pressure and the volume is not getting to that. Uh, so let's run it up and then kind of see what happens. No easy. So that's currently where we're at with the snowblower. Uh, this video, I wasn't going to put this on the channel. Uh, the engineers at uh, SkidPro wanted to kind of see what was going on to help diagnose, diagnose the problem. Um, but I thought, because I had so many questions, I thought I'd just throw it up there and, and let you guys um, um, mull on this as well. You know, there's a lot of, I've got a lot of uh, really smart guys in the subscribers and probably some hydraulic experts uh, as well. Maybe you know, uh, maybe you see something that, that I'm not seeing, because I'm not, I'm not a super, knowledgeable uh, hydraulics guy. I, I think where we need to go from here is um, um, just to confirm that the power pack is not, the, the bypass valve on the power pack is not opening prematurely, uh, put some gauges on there to check the flow and the pressure at the connection points. So once we have that, then we can completely ro rule out the power pack and then we can take a look at the, blo at the blower on the front end. Uh, because if we have enough volume and we have enough pressure, um, then this, uh, this should operate um, perfectly. Um, so there may be some tweaking and to, to do, but that's why we're doing it. You know, that's why, um, that, that's why we're doing the R and D here and, and trying this out so that we can know in the future if there's problems and these videos would be out there as well. Um, and then once we come up with the solution, um, we'll share that as well. So I, I think it's, um, I, th I think it's, it's worth doing. So, all right. Was there anything else? Anything else that I wanted to share? Nope, I guess, that's, I guess that's it. Well, have a good day. Happy Sabbath to everyone. And we will see you guys on the next video. So I got a fun idea for a video series uh, that I could use you guys' help with, uh, on some inspiration here and some input. Uh, as, as I've always said, uh, toolboxes are where tools go to die, right? You know, you got, <laughs> yeah, how many uh, have you a big, big toolbox in your shop where you pull up the drawer and it's just loaded with the junk that you never use, right? I mean, there might be some a very few guys that actually are super organized with that. But I think but for most of us, when we don't know what to do with something. It gets uh, dropped into a toolbox drawer. So I was going through some stuff and trying to clean out some of the things that I don't need anymore. And I had the idea, I looked at some tools that I've packed around for 15, 20 years that I hate. They're absolutely terrible, useless designs. I don't, I, I never use them. When I do use them, they failed miserably. And I thought we should do a video series on the worst tools in our toolbox, the tools that, uh, worst tools ever designed that so many people have uh, that can relate to. So I've got uh, I've got a couple things picked out that are that I think are really, really terrible that I will be uh, doing a video on. Let me know in the comments what tools do you have that are completely useless. I'm not I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag and tell you which ones I've chosen, but I'll, I'll bet that you have them. Uh, uh, and I bet that you feel the same way about it. Maybe not, but put, put, please put it in the comment which ones, and I'll go through those, and, and uh, if I don't have them all, I'll see if I can find, find them, and let's just see how terrible they are and why they're even out there. Uh, why do we pack these around for so long? Now, in regards to that, whenever we do this sort of video, people get so mad. Man, it twists their tails. They... 
It's the funny thing is, it, the thing you hear most most often is that uh, I thought this was this sort of channel, and why are you doing this? And you know, I don't want to see ski movies videos. You know, this is a homesteading channel, unsubscribed, or I don't want to see see this, or I don't want to see watch reviews on that. You know what? I, I'm not going to fit in the box that you want me to fit in. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. I think these comments come from small minded people who just don't have the the ability to to see the bigger picture and and that um, life a life can be full of lots of different things. It doesn't have to be chainsaw videos. I mean, do you really think that I could do axe or chainsaw videos uh, for eight years every single day? I'd like to see you try to do it and make them interesting and make them watchable. Um, no, it's not impo- it's impossible. And the thing that makes the channel uh, fun for me to do, and and I hope fun to watch, is that um, I it, it follows along with with my passions and the things that I'm into. And uh, like many of you, you know, I get really excited about certain things, whether it be firearms, and I'm going to show firearm videos, or or maybe I get into watches, or or building things in the wood shop, or get into skiing, or mountain biking, or dirt biking. Those things I, I gonna, I'm going to bring you along with, and that's what we're going to do. Um, I don't fit into any particular box. I've always lived a very non-conventional life. Um, and I have a non-conventional mind and I am curious and I, I like to try new things and, and I'm always excited to share those things with you and to share the passions as well as many channels that I follow are from guys that are very like-minded as well, that they don't follow any particular vein, but it's boring to watch someone that just does the same thing all, all over again. And those channels, they over and over again, and those channels, they pl- plateau and they kind of just die and, and fade away. It um, is not fun for the creator after so many years. It's not fun for the people to watch for so long. Uh, we always we always change. And, and to, to receive heat um, or negativity in the comments uh, from for having a different perspective on something. You know, I, I, it happens every day. Hey, six years ago, you said that this was the best pocket knife you've ever had, and now you're not using this. You're a fraud, and you're a liar, and I'm unsubscribing. Well, you know, things change, and, and uh, technology change, and desires and passions change, and what I liked uh, 10 years ago is is oftentimes very different than what I like now, and uh, it's, um, I, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from, um, but uh, I, I'm going to share what I'm interested in. I'm going to share what I like to do and what I'm doing current currently. And if that doesn't fit into your mold uh, or what you think the channel should be, then, you know, maybe the channel's not a good fit for you. The subscribe button is always there, big and prominent. Used to be yellow. Now it's red. You can click on that. Um, but if you enjoy seeing new things and going along and, uh, you know, and just, I don't know. I don't, I'm just not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to do uh, what I want to do and uh, uh, do what makes me happy and inspires me and, um, and let the chips fall where they may. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.